Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres, from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci-fi. If you love to read, this is the podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. And welcome to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Sarah, and I am happy to be hanging out with you on this very rainy Tuesday. Um, it's very rainy here. It might be very snowy where you are because the rest of the country is being dumped on by snow. We just have a ton of rain, which is causing leaks. And yesterday, uh, something happened in our house. Our dog encountered a skunk. I don't know. Maybe not. I mean, the dog doesn't really sm- didn't really smell like it encountered a skunk. I mean, there's a skunk smell, but I was able to give him a bath and scrub him about six times, and he's he's good. But the house smells like I don't know. The the skunk rolled in diesel fuel and ate a bunch of cabbage, and then came in and rolled around on all the carpets. I don't know. If you've ever had this experience, let me know because we have been battling the olfactory nightmare, as I've taken to calling it, for the last um, two days, and it's really disgusting. <laughs> so that's that's what's going on in my life. I hope that even if you are um, buried under snow, you don't have an olfactory nightmare and that the snow isn't causing too many problems. Um, at any rate, enough of a weather report and um, my strange life. I'm happy to be here for, with you for another interview. Today I am interviewing author Jana Richards. She is a multi-genre author and we are talking about one of her contemporary romances today. She also writes paranormal romance and historical romance. She has a, a broad range of different genres that she likes to write in, all in the romance um, genre, but uh, with all of the, the sub-genres in there. Uh, today, as I said, we are talking about contemporary romance and the first book in her Masonville series. Masonville is a small town in North Dakota, and this is the first in the series. Let me give you the description of that book. Lauren didn't intend to sleep with her brother-in-law, Cole, on the day of her husband's funeral. But now that she is pregnant, she's not sorry. Cole's given her a baby, a long-wished-for miracle. He's been her friend forever, though she never told him or anyone else how unhappy her marriage to his cheating brother was. And she's afraid to tell the small town that considered her husband a hero that the baby isn't his. Cole's been in love with Lauren since he was 16. It kills him that everyone believes the baby is his dead brother's. All he wants is to claim the baby and Lauren as his own. Though she marries him, will Lauren's heart ever be his? Lauren must tell the truth or risk losing Cole. Is her newly discovered love for him greater than her fear of scandal in her hometown? Now, if you've never lived in a hometown, you might be thinking, eh, what's the big deal? Who cares? If you have lived in a small town, you know exactly what's going on because you know that people are going to be talking about you. My hometown um, is about a thousand people and um, the, the Masonville is a fictional town in North Dakota, just outside of Bismarck, and it's about five or 6,000 people. So compared to my hometown, it's big, right? Uh, you know, it's a metropolis, uh, <laughs> but it, it's still very small and people talk. I, I can still tell you all of the so-called scandals that happened in my hometown. Were they true? Mm, probably. Some of them. Were they exaggerated? Oh, yeah. Were they passed around and chewed over and talked about and just not let go? Yeah, definitely. So having any kind of um, unusual situation in a small town is cause for gossip. And this book is no different. So I knew I going into this that that was going to be um, kind of a fun part for me living those small town experiences as I read Lauren's and Cole's story. I I really, you know, I really enjoyed that aspect of it. In some ways, the the smallness of the town almost becomes another character, the, the character of the gossip mill and the cattiness and just everything that goes on. And if you've ever been involved 
in either side of that, either the, the, the gossipies or the gossipers <laughs> um, in a small town, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. But even if you don't, this is still uh, a fun contemporary romance, and you should read it even if you don't understand the weirdness of living in a small town. You should read this and get an idea of how happy you are that you did not grow up in that environment where everybody talks about everything and they know everything about you. Even if you don't know, I go home to my town, my hometown to visit my parents and people I have never even met because my parents own the movie theater. Um, my parents, and my brother, my brother works at the grocery store. My dad uh, worked at the school for years. He was the K-12 librarian. Everybody knows my family. And so then they think they know me. They're like, oh yeah, you're that. You, yeah, you belong to that family. And then they think they know all these things. It's quite the adventure as I'm standing there going, who are you? And why do you think you know me? But the book is called Child of Mine. Did I ever mention that? I, I said it was the first in the Masonville series. It's Child of Mine by Jana Richards. And we're going to go ahead and get to that interview. Um, before we get to that interview, two things. One, I have copies of this book to give away. So stay tuned to the end of this interview to find out how you can win a copy of Child of Mine by Jana Richards. Two, there's some places in the interview where the audio is a little funky. I didn't notice it. When Jana and I were talking, um, but I, I don't know. I'm going to blame the polar vortex. Are we still in the polar vortex? I'm still going to blame it. I'm going to blame the polar vortex because Jana is in um, Canada and I am in California. So I'm just deciding that the signal got scrambled through all the snow. And there's a few places where the audio is a little funky. So I'm just going to warn you of that. I did what I could to um, tone it down, temper it, but uh, I wasn't able to get rid of it altogether. So just... Just be warned, but um, if you could just stick with it, it's only in a few places, and Jana's a lot of fun, so you definitely want to check out the interview. And I'm going to stop talking now and let Jana do the talking. So here we go with my interview um, with Jana Richards about her first book in the Masonville series, Child of Mine. Hi, Jana. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Glad to it be is here. wonderful. It's wonderful to have you here, and we are here to talk about your newest book, Child of Mine. Before we get to the book, um, I'd love for my listeners just to get to know you a little bit. So if you could share a little something about yourself. Uh, well, I've been writing for a number of years. I've got about 18 books published now. Both um, I, I ventured into self-publishing last year for the first time, so I have four self-published books and about 14 um, books with, with other publishers. Um, I love romance. I love the message of romance. And um, I guess it's writing is something that feeds my creativity, and um, I just enjoy it very much. Great. Thank you. So let's go ahead and talk about um, Child of Mine. Can you tell us a little bit about the story? Well, uh, I love a, a friends to lovers story, and I, I wanted to write one with just a bit of a twist. Lauren and Cole have been friends since high school, and even after Lauren marries Cole's brother, Billy, and moves away from North Dakota, they remain friends. But what Lauren doesn't realize is that Cole's always been in love with her. He was too shy and too unsure as a teenager to tell her how he felt, and then once she married his brother, of course he couldn't he couldn't go there at all. But he's never stopped loving her. Mm hmm Yeah, and so what was your you said you want you've always wanted to write a friends to lovers story. What was your inspiration for this particular story? Um, I don't know. Um just a I think I wanted to show this is a series, so I wanted to show everyone in the series having to overcome some kind of trauma or heartache in their past. And for these people, it's the heartache of, well, for Cole, anyway, it's the heartache of unrequited love. And for, for Lauren, it's the heartache of a marriage that didn't work out for her. It wasn't what she had hoped or thought it was going to be. So, um, and I wanted to show, I also wanted to show that, uh, you know, you can make mistakes, you can, things can go wrong, but it's never too late to start over again either. 
about. It's never too mm-hmm. late to create the life that you want with the person you want to be with. You just have to have the courage to do it. And I, yeah. I, I really like, I, I like to give readers that kind of message of hope in, in books. Okay. So it's never too late. Okay, thank you. Um, and so talk a little bit more about the main characters of Lauren and Cole. What about them do you think might resonate with readers? Well, they're both hiding truths. They're both hiding things from themselves, from each other, from the people around them. Just like most people do, we, we hide mm-hmm. things that, that are unpleasant. Um, Cole, of course, is hiding the fact that he's loved Lauren forever. Because he thinks he can never live up to his brother. He's compared himself to his brother all his life and feels he comes up short. Um, his brother was a hockey star and sort of a hero in this small town. And um, he, he doesn't feel he can live up to him. And Lauren is hiding the truth about her marriage, uh, her five-year marriage to Cole's brother. Billy cheated on her almost from the beginning of their marriage. And she was on the brink of leaving him when he's killed in a car accident. They're both hiding the truth about Lauren's baby. Everyone thinks her dead husband is the baby's father. And that Cole marries her, you know, just to help her out, you know, he's being a good brother or something. I don't know. But just to help. No, no that doesn't sound right. <laughs> he, he's, um, he's doing it out of the goodness of, of his heart. But um, she's too humiliated to tell everyone that her family and her small town that her baby was conceived on the day of her husband's funeral, on the day that she turned to Cole for comfort. And out of their grief, this baby was conceived. And Cole tries to hide the fact that he's, how much it hurts him that she won't acknowledge that he's the baby's father. Mm-hmm. So, so there's a lot of hiding going around. And until they can bring everything out into the open, they don't have a chance. So, right. Truth bows right. Come out. So there is your introduction to Child of Mine by Jana Richards. We do have to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about that small town aspect of uh, the, the setting of Masonville. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I will be right back. Still on the search of that one true love? On the limbo in this crazy world of dating, marriage, relationships. Well... Listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Relationship Podcast, your one-stop podcast for everything about relationships. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and my interview with author Jana Richards about her book, Child of Mine. We are now going to talk about the kind of character of Masonville, that small town aspect of this book. So let's go ahead and get back to that interview. And another aspect of the book is that it takes place in a fairly small town in North Dakota. So can you talk a little bit about your decision to set the book there, especially being a a small town? Yeah, uh, well, I've grown up in small towns, um, or I've lived in small towns. I grew up actually on a farm in um, just north of North Dakota on the uh, other side of the 49th parallel in Saskatchewan, Canada. Um, I grew up in a small town that I went to school with was like 700 people at the time. And I've lived in small cities that were around the size that... I imagine Masonville to be, which was around 5,000 people. And um, there's a real dynamic. I think I understand the dynamic of that kind of town um, and small town living. Um, Saskatchewan, my home province, uh, shares some of the same kind of 
dogs in North Dakota. We live on the wide open prairie with cold, cold winters like it is today and hot, hot summers. And that kind of harsh climate means people tend to look out for each other in small towns on both sides of the border. Um, I was just gonna say, uh, <laughs> because I remember living in a small town, I live in a city now, a fairly large city, but uh, I, I will never forget living in a small town and, and, and what that's like. And I, I would, I definitely could um, um, think about how, how Lori would feel if she finds herself pregnant, not exactly the way she hoped to be pregnant, you know what I mean? She um, would find herself very kind of embarrassed, humiliated, because she's not pregnant with her husband's child. And, you know, that, that in a small town, that would be pretty hard to have. And it, it, it's not hidden because she, uh, as, as often happens in small towns, the, um, the grapevine, the gossip <laughs> mm -hmm. pretty much goes like wildfire. And she, her pregnancy is announced before she is even ready to have it announced. Yes. Yes, it is. It is announced before she, <laughs> she's ready for it, for sure. Yeah. But don't tell. They don't tell anybody. Everybody just sort of assumes that it's her dead husband's baby. Nobody imagines that it could be Cole's child. So right. uh, they, they get away with it for a while. They get away right. with it for a while. But they can't so, fool themselves. Oh, I'm sorry? But they can't fool themselves. Right, right. Um, you see, you've mentioned that um, the North Dakota is, is similar to where you grew up. Um, it, are there autobiographical elements in this story or the characters besides, you know, you, you grew up in small towns, it's set in a small town? Well, I can remember, um, you know, what it's like. Um, you know, to be how impossible it is to hide anything. You know, that was sort of one of the things that ran through my head, I think, while I was writing this. And I'll give you an example. Um, my, when we lived in, in this small town in, in Saskatchewan, um, my husband was away on business. And I was at home with our two, two girls, two young girls. They were in school. And um, I forgot to set the alarm one morning. And I woke up in a panic in the morning thinking that I was totally late. I, you know, we were going to be late for school. And, um, you know, every, and so I got the girls out of bed and, you know, rushed them to school and, you know, made them eat their cereal really fast and, and rushed them to school. And I got there and there's nobody there. And it's like, oh, my gosh, it's, it was only it was only about 730. I was totally off, totally <laughs> off. I, you know, I limped home in my car and, you know, we went home and watched cartoons for an hour or so until it really was time to go. And then later that morning, I got a call from my daughter's kindergarten teacher, and she said, somebody saw you at school <laughs> early this morning, and um, we're just wondering if everything's okay. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. It's like, oh, yeah, everything's okay. I had to explain to her, you know, I'm just an idiot. I can't tell time. <laughs> but you can't be anonymous in a small town. Even your car right. can't be anonymous in a small town. Ex so, exactly. So it was that kind of feeling that, you know, no matter what you do, someone's going to notice you. Some, someone's going to take notice of, of what you do. That was the sort of feeling I went with in this book. But there's, mm -hmm. also, there's also the other side, the flip side of living in a small town, where, um, thing, you know, if you're in trouble, there's people there who will look out for you. You know, you can count on someone to help you out because they know you. So, mm -hmm. so there's that too. It's not all. It's not all terrible. It's it's actually living in a small town can be pretty wonderful too. Yeah. yeah. Did you do any particular research for the book? Well, one of the one of the research things I did was on veterinary medicine because uh, in the book, a cool is a vet. And uh, I researched, there was one scene where he delivers a foal. And I researched that. I went on online equine magazines and 
you know, look things up, uh, the details about delivering a foal. I watch several YouTube videos about um, a foal being born and that sort of thing. And then afterwards, once I've written the, um, uh, the scene, I, I sent it to uh, a large animal veterinarian that I know who deals with um, equine medicine and uh, sent it to him to make sure I had gotten the details right. And, he said, yeah, it was okay. Yeah, I guess I, so I did it. Yes, I did okay with it. <laughs> but yeah. I, yeah, I work, yeah. I work for um, a veterinary medical association and uh, the Provincial Veterinary Medicine, Medical Association here. So I know a number of veterinarians and um, veterinary technicians. So, so it's, it's very handy <laughs> that way. The rest mm -hmm. of the series. Yeah, the rest of the series, uh, there's going to be people who work uh, in the veterinary clinic as well. So um, I'm sure I'll use their services again. Yeah, and and this is listed as book one in the series. You mentioned that it's uh, it's uh, the Masonville series. So how many books are you envisioning? I'm I'm looking at four at the moment. Uh, I can see I can clearly see four books at the moment. Um, I don't know, you know, I'm leaving myself open though in case inspiration arises and I want to tell someone else's story. You know how uh, as you add more people into the, uh, the story world, there might be someone who triggers my imagination and whose story I want to tell. So um, four at the moment, but uh, leaving myself open for further books. Okay. And um, whose story will you be telling next? Right now, in book, I'm working on book two, and um, I'm telling Garrett's story. Garrett is Lauren's brother, mm -hmm. and um, uh, his love interest is going to be Blair. She, she moves into um, Masonville to work at the veterinary clinic. And um, she also takes over her grandfather's farm. She, she comes, her mother grew up in Masonville, though Blair didn't. Uh, her mother grew up there. And uh, she's sort of coming back home. Let me go ahead and jump in here so we can take our second and final break of the podcast. When we come back, we'll be talking about some of the other genres that Jana writes in and some of her other series. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I will be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast. We're just going to go ahead and jump right into the conclusion of my interview with Jana Richards. You are also a multi-genre author. These are contemporary romance, but I know you write um, uh, some historical fiction, some paranormal romance. Uh, can you talk about some of your other books? Um, yeah, I, well, I, I really like, I like variety. And I like um, I like to read all different kinds of genres in, in romance fiction. So I also like to write different kinds of romance, uh, even in a even in a kind of straight contemporary romance. I, I will sometimes throw in um, 
a bit of the paranormal, uh, like I did with uh, the series I self-published last year, the Love at Solace Lake series. In, in every one of those books, um, one of the sisters has a point where, where she sees the ghost, we think it's a ghost, of, of her dead mother. So I just wanted to throw a little something in there because I just find it fascinating. And um, uh, romantic suspense. I love romantic suspense. I've only written a couple of them, but um, it's something I really want to pursue in the future. I just love that element of danger or mystery in, in a story. And, and one of my favorite um, uh, time periods and genres to write in at the moment is uh, historical set during World War II. Uh, I've always been fascinated with World War II and the events surrounding it. There's just so many stories connected with the war and, and so many real life love stories. I, I had, a, had a wonderful time actually uh, researching in that area. I, one of the uh, novellas I, I wrote was about Canadian war brides coming to Canada after the war. And uh, that was that was absolutely fascinating. I, uh, I uh, really enjoyed doing that. And I definitely want to write more stories set in that era, for sure. Mm -hmm. You're working on book two of the Masonville series. Um, uh, are you working on anything else right now? That, that's probably a load. Of, <laughs> but you're probably thinking, isn't that enough? But are you working on anything else? Well, I always seem to have a few uh, books kind of half done. I'm not quite sure what to do with them at the moment. But yeah, I do actually have another series that I, I started a while ago and haven't quite finished yet. It's um, It sort of combines all of the genres that I love. There's a little bit of... Um, Contemporary romance, there's some time travel, um, going back to World War II again, and um, uh, a bit of, the, of course, the paranormal. You know, just one time travel into <laughs> so, um, Yeah, a bit of historical, a bit of contemporary. Uh, the gist of that story is, at least the first book in the series, is that um, uh, an angel. Uh, oh, he's not even yet. A man died. He's told that he, um, to get his wings, to become a full-fledged angel, he has to show someone, he has to show three people uh, how to get back to love. They lost their love at one point in their life, and he has to help them get back to it. And... Um, once he does, he will be admitted into heaven and, you know, be a full-fledged angel. So his first assignment is to find Frank, who's an old man, old, old man in a nursing home. And he takes him back to World War II, to um, uh, the Normandy invasion in 1944. And... Uh, to the English woman that he fell in love with at that point, back then. And um, so, not quite sure where I'm going with this story yet, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> but um, I, I, I love it. <laughs> One of these days, I'm going to finish it. So. Yeah, but, You're just but, waiting for the characters to tell you where they're going. Yeah, kind of, kind of. And yeah. um, there's also a lot of I think I got stuck on one point of actual historical, um, you know, the way things actually happened back in the day, and I haven't made my way around it yet. So mm -hmm. um, I'm I'm working on that, or I will work on that at some point, and then everything will sort of fall into place, I think. But for now, I'm concentrating on um, this series, the Masonville series, and. I'm hoping also, um, as I was saying, last year I wrote or published uh, three self-published books, the Love at Solace Lake series, and 
And there's a couple of people in that series that I really want to tell their stories still. And um, especially the one young man named Drew. And I really want to tell his story. It's been bugging me since I was writing the other books. So hopefully I will get back to that as well. Because, you know, so many books and so little time. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> so good. You've been writing for a while, obviously. Um, when did you start writing? Was it something that you've always wanted to do? I probably started writing uh, in the early 90s. Um, it didn't do very well. I mean, I, I submitted quite a few books, but uh, was never really... Um, I got a lot of nice rejection letters. That's about it. But hmm. uh, I think I... I had to learn my craft. I wasn't there yet. So I really got serious about writing probably mid 2000s. And um, my first book was published in 2006. So I think it went to market in 2007. And um, yeah, that, at that point, I really started to take things seriously. I spent more time at it. I treated it more like uh, a job and a, than a hobby. And um, um, like I said, really got serious about it. Like, talked about it more for a starter. Um, I didn't hardly ever told anyone that I even wrote uh, up to that point. But you know, I just had to get over myself and uh, um, take it seriously. Mm -hmm. okay. I did at one point um, <laughs> way back. I, I thought I wanted to be a journalist, and I uh, really would have liked to, to do that. In fact, um, <laughs> I didn't think I had it, had what it took to be a fiction writer. I remember taking a class in university on creative writing, and I totally sucked. I, I thought I was terrible. We had to write a short story, and everybody else seemed a, way, uh, a lot better than mine. <laughs> so. Oh, no. I ruled out fiction writing for a very, very long time. So this was something that hit me probably not until my late 30s that I really, it, the bug to write really started to hit me. Mm -hmm. So then out of your experience, would you have um, advice for aspiring authors? Don't give up, for a starter. If this is something mm -hmm. you really want to do, and you really have to want it because it's a lot of work, a lot of commitment. Don't don't give up. Keep uh, trying to uh, learn your craft, and you do that by by writing every day or as much as you can. You do that by taking classes, by going to conferences, and learning from other writers. And mostly, I think you learn it by reading. Most writers are big readers for good reason. Um, that's, how, that's how you learn. You learn from the best. Take what uh, other writers have done and not copy, but emulate. You know, discover what they do, what works, what works in their stories. Okay. And when you do take the time to read, what um, do you have favorite genres, favorite authors? Oh yeah, um, I I love historical um, novel sets in like Regency or Victorian England. I read a lot of those. I don't think I could ever write one, but I love those books. So I, I read a number of those, and some of my I'm looking at them here on my shelf. Uh, a lot of those, some of my favorite writers are Mary Ballard. Um, Sally McKenzie, Joanna Lindsay, uh, Lisa Kleppis, Joe Beverly, Jude Devereaux, and quite a few there. Um, again, I like, I really like um, romantic suspense, like I said, and uh, Suzanne Brockman is one of my favorites there. Nora Roberts for, for um, suspense. And, um, Contemporary, I read a lot of contemporary too. Now, some of my favorites right now are um, Susan Mallory, Jill Chelvis, 
Nora Roberts again. Um, I mean, too many to even, to even see. I really do have a lot of favorites. So I try right, to read right. as widely as I can. But yeah. Okay. Thomas Gibbs, there's always Thanks. favorites that you want to read over and over and over again. I think that's true for most readers. Yes. All right. Thank you for that. Um, I know you have a website, so if you can tell people uh, your website and where they can find you on social media. Yeah, my website is janarichards.com, and um, I'm also I also blog a fair bit at uh, janarichards.blogspot.com. Also, I blog on a group blog called the Word Wranglers, wordwranglers.blogspot.com. I uh, blog with some friends there, some writing friends. We have a, we have a lot of fun there. Um, if you go to my website, I have all my social media um, icons there, like Facebook, Twitter, Goodreads, that sort of thing, BookBub. You can find all of my contact information there at janarichards.com. Okay, thank you so much. So we've talked about quite a few things um, in terms of writing and your books, but is there anything that you wanted to mention that we haven't covered? Um, I think I think the one thing I wanted to say is that I love to hear from people. That would be that would be great. Just give me a shout out through my website. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about was um about emotion in books. Uh, that's what I really strive for. When I when I write, that's what I appreciate when I read a book. So I'm always striving to make readers feel something, you know, to feel the betrayal. Uh, in this series, I want them to feel the, the agony of past tra traumas. Um, I want my readers to connect to um, my characters through emotion. And I guess the other thing I wanted to say, if, if someone had never heard of me before, and they probably haven't, um, I, I want to give them an opportunity to try one of my books. So I do have a romantic comedy free online. Uh, you can find it at any bookstore. It's called Rescue Me, or you can find it on my website. If you go to janarichards.com slash books. HTML, you can find Rescue Me. Uh, like I said, it's a contemporary romantic comedy, and I call it Book One in my Victorian Mansion series. This the, the, the books take place in a Victorian mansion in Toronto. And uh, if you like that book, there is a second in the series. It's called Take a Chance on Me, and you can either buy that book or if you sign up for my monthly newsletter, uh, I give it to you for free. So that one's called Take a Chance on Me. And um, I hope readers will take a chance on me and, and give it a whirl. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. And thank you so much for taking time to talk with me. I really appreciate it. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity. Well, it was wonderful to have you on the podcast. And um, so the book, again, is Child of Mine. It's the first in the Masonville series. And uh, looking forward to the second one. Uh, I, I kind of thought maybe that's where you were going with, with the, her brother as the next, you know, that he might make an appearance. So I'm I'm intrigued to find out more about his story. Um, I haven't settled on a name for the book yet, but I'm thinking uh, a better man at this point. Well, I'm looking forward to that, and thank you again. Thank you. Thank you so much again to Jana for taking the time out of her weekend to talk to me about her book, uh, the first in the Masonville series, Child of Mine, as well as some of her other books and just thoughts on writing and reading and all of that great stuff that I love to hear about from my authors. So thank you so much to Jana. Thank you, as always, to my listeners for joining me. Um, I hope you'll join me next time. But before we get to that, 
Uh, I did mention at the beginning that this is a book I have copies to give away. So if you are interested in um, some great contemporary romance set in a small town, then you should definitely sign up for a chance to win a copy of Child of Mine by Jana Richards. It's very easy to do. All you have to do is go to our social media pages, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and comment on the post with episode 140, Interview with Jana Richards. That's it. Go to those pages, Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, and comment. Uh, please like and share and all of that retweet, all of that good stuff as well. But in order to enter the giveaway, you do have to leave a comment. So share, tweet, do all that good stuff. Um, like, but also comment because this is a great book and you should definitely check it out. So please uh, enter that giveaway I, and you know leave comments too. I love to hear from you. Thank you again so much for joining me. Thank you again to Jana. I hope you all will join me again on Thursday when I've got some great children's books that I will be talking about. So stay tuned for that. Yeah, stay tuned and then also tune in. Join me on Thursday. In the meantime, no matter what your weather, no matter what your skunk situation, I hope that you have some time this week to get yourself lost in a good book. Thanks. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from Movie to music, from sports, to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program. Music.